Let's get ready to rumble. Aaron Gwynn then. Let's see what the time tells us. He doesn't look like he's hanging about or taking it easy, Aaron Gwynn here. No, he's not, of course he's not. Look at the speed of the man down here. Round safely the last couple of turns and Aaron Gwynn. He's had his fair share of bad luck this year today though. It looks like it's all going his way. Aaron Gwynn then comes down to the line. Look at that, 1.4 up, what a Gwynn win. is your 2017. UCI Downhill World Cup champion. This is a pretty special place for me. Uh, 2007, everything started here. I met there two young guys in the age of around 15, and they did pretty well on their cheap, rubbish supermarket bikes. I had a small discussion with them and asked why they don't buy a real dirt jump bike, which is suitable for this kind of riding and the bummer was they were not able to afford a normal dirt jump bike. And so they brought me to the idea to create an own mountain bike company with affordable bikes for everybody. My name is Markus Flossmann. I'm 42 years old and I'm the founder and CEO of YT Industries. I was uh, still full employed at this time, of course. We uh, draw the first frame, then a few weeks later I flew over to Taiwan and was discussing uh, geometries, pricing, lead times with manufacturers. When I got um, the first samples, I drove to Munich to the headquarters of the German Freeride magazine and showed up there and asked if they are interested um, to, to promote this bike a little bit. But um, they went a step further, surprisingly, and they put the bike in an already running um, comparison test with all the big global brands. Uh, four weeks later, when the new issue uh, came out, um, I won the prize performance test. Those 150 pieces were sold out after 10 days. And this was the point where I realized, fuck, that could work. And I quitted my job and um, yeah, lived for the passion. Just that's how it started, yeah. In the beginning, I was limited with my capacities and I had no clue how to um, um, develop a suspension frame. Of course, I, I knew how um, a full suspension frame should feel and work, but I had no idea how, how to create an own suspension system. And this was the point where Stefan Willeret jumped in. I'm Stefan Willeret and I'm the CTO of YT Industries. I knew Stefan because he was working in a local bike shop. He was entering the, the bike shop where I was working. I guess it was end of the 90s. We went riding, riding together. But then um, we, we didn't see us a long time, I guess two, two or, um, or three years. There I was working uh, in the automotive company. And I went to a local bike shop here again in Forchheim. Um, serious stuff with suit and... Uh... Willy was standing there in a suit. And I, I just thought, what the hell is wrong with him now? <laughs> and, and then he was telling me his ideas about doing a mountain bike company called YT. Dirt jump bikes and also uh, full suspension bikes. And in this moment, I saw the fire in his eyes. And I was like, oh yeah, I want to be a part of it. The reason why Willy left um, this automotive supply company was passion. I'm 100% sure. The first frame we created together was the 2S. We did some rough hand sketches and then I was going into the 2D CAD and into the simulation program. And this was the first um, DH bike on a price point, I guess, was 1,700 euros. So it was the first affordable uh, DH bike for everybody. At this time, I guess we totally we were three people. Yeah, we, we had a small office. We, we still have this office now. It was um, 50 square meter office space and 200 square meter warehouse where we assembled the bikes um, by ourselves. And of course, we, we uh, talked to the customers. We uh, thought about marketing campaigns and ideas and um, about new products. Yeah, everything took place here in this building. In the beginning, my idea was to create a more or less local mountain bike brand with three to four different models, just for the German-speaking market. Steve Jones um, jumped in and uh, showed the world what YD is um, doing, because the dirt mag at this time was also available, for example, on, uh, on the Shanghai airport. 
you know, or in the bike park Whistler. From this point on, yeah, YT got more known and known worldwide. And Trio Lacondiki is a badass motherfucker. <laughs> I'm Andreola Kondegi, I'm 28 and I'm from San Pedro de Vilamajor. It's a little town next to Barcelona. Uh, I guess we signed him in 2011 and at this time um, he already was a free ride superstar worldwide and YT was a small little gravity bike brand from Germany. When I got Trainworks, I remember the, the years after that, I was not so stoked on the event anymore. Like, not so motivated, you know, I was seeing the sport going into like smaller jumps and a lot of wood and some weird features and I seen it going into a different way. I got into motocross, bigger jumps and bigger bikes and more like, like fast series, you know, but um, first day I tried the, the downhill bike, I was super stoked, felt like I could trick the thing and, and I think that it helped me a lot. Like I got stoked on biking again a lot and I got into like the downhill bikes again because because I was super stoked on the YT, and, and after being on the Fest Series for a couple of years, just riding a lot of downhill and stuff, I went to Rampage, and, and I remember that year being like super into it, being like, all right, dude, like this year you rode a lot, you kind of need to prove that like you're still there, and I just sent it and yeah, got the win. Everything related to YT, it's being a good time for me. It means bike riding, it means like a sick company behind you that's like giving you the sickest bikes and making riding easier for you. We are the only company who really fits to him, fits to his philosophy and um, to his lifestyle. I think he's the perfect fit for us. Willy is a guy who knows everything about bikes, parts and suspension. He's a real mastermind when it comes to kinematics. Together we developed some market-changing and award-winning bikes like the Tours, the first real DH bike in the price category of hardtails at this time, and the Capra, the mother of all modern enduro bikes. Like the Capra is the bike that people see me ride the less, but it's actually the bike I ride the most. It's a super easy bike to ride, you can ride everything. It was really the first high-end, lightweight um, enduro bike which was affordable by a bigger group. Because at this time, really high-end bikes, carbon fiber high-end bikes, were um, double the price. We start really early with the first two is, and there's a, a history in the development inside. The first one changed now four times. The curves, the progression. It won the Rampage with um, Andreo, but we never had the chance to prove that it's also a good race bike. At this point, we tried to find a rider who is also able to win World Cups. And yeah, we thought that Aaron Quinn could be the right fit. Nothing can slow this man down, Aaron Quinn. A new bike, a new team this year. To get our first win at the first race we ever did, a World Cup, I cannot describe how, how excited I was. That's history that uh, can't be undone now, so it's pretty cool. The number one plate on the front of the bike, the series leader. If I have my best run, I win. But you want to be good enough to where you don't need a perfect run to beat everybody. The 2016 UCI World Cup overall winner. The 2017 season was uh, a quite hard one. Because it's the one I had to fight the hardest to get. Nothing came easy. He was not so lucky at some races. 
I think I started the year like 68th in points after the first round. So to be able to still pull it off at the end and win and to be able to kind of do it epically with the Mount St. Anne race. Can the California deliver in the run, in the rain, in the mud? Surely not. Oh, he's at two seconds. seconds. This is crazy. Gwen Arnold yes. at the time. Over a second. Aaron Gwynn does the near impossible here in Mount St. Anne. As a racer, man, that's that's fun to be able to battle and, and, and push through. When you get it at the end, it was uh, it was pretty sweet this year. I think for me, when I first met YT and we started chatting, it was uh, the opportunity to kind of do things how I wanted to do them. So that was what I was looking for, so it was a good fit there. And then as soon as I jumped on the bike, um, I really loved the bike. And then I was able to build kind of my ultimate team with everybody I wanted to work with, the sponsors I wanted to hire and all that stuff and kind of build my my dream package, so to speak. So for me, being able to do that with them, to bring them their first win, and then now two World Cup titles in a row, um, and everything we've done together has been pretty special. It's a bike out of the box, less than 5,000 euros, and we won the overall World Cup now twice. Crazy. Jesse, for me, that bike's just fun. From the first day I got on it, I've always liked that bike. You know, I like 29ers quite a bit. The trails here are pretty slippery, so having the extra traction, whatever, is cool. And that bike's just fun, man. It's like a real aggressive, low, like, just fun bike to ride. The idea of the Jeffsy was born in a pub. We came together and said, okay, let's do a 29 all-mountain bike and with, with gravity jeans. An all-mountain the YT way. And we brought it to market, and now it's the best-selling product in line. In the beginning, like I told, um, I had in mind to create a small local bike brand that I never expected the success, never. And now we are in total around about 100 people worldwide working for um, YT and having uh, around 10 people in the R&D department thinking every day about new products for the next years. Honestly, it's uh, sometimes hard to realize uh, where YT is uh, now today. We don't have the time to sit down and think how, how good we have done in the last year. Because we are always thinking about the next steps. Hey, I'm Vali Höll. I'm 15 years old and come from Saalbach, Austria. Wally Hell, in my eyes, is the most talented writer, actually. She runs faster times in uh, the junior class than a few of the elite races. She's 100% the definition of young talent, and that's, yeah, it's, it's super important for us not only um, support and sponsor the big stars in the scene, we have to stay um, to our core, true to our heart. And um, young talents, that's the idea why, um, why all started. Over the last decade, I never forgot where we come from. What gave us the passion and the chance to create something special. And over the years, I also recognized that young talent has nothing to do with age. It's never too late to explore your young talent. It's never too late to try something new and find your passion. Even if the world around tells you you are too old to start with this, or you are not talented for doing that or keep your secure job because nobody is waiting for a new bike brand from Little Forchheim in Germany. Nobody. And that's why YT is existing now. Don't give a fuck what others say. Be true to yourself. Live your passion no matter how old you are. Live uncaged. <laughs>